I know it's mid-July, but I want to take a look at some dark gothic styles. You know, it's never too early to get ready for Halloween. All right, let's get into it. Oh. Oh. All right, the first one I want to look at here is the Caprichos. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Caprichos were uh, a series of dark satirical etchings um, by the artist, uh, renowned Spanish artist, Francisco Goya. I'm sure I'm pronouncing all that right. He did them in the late 18th century, comprising of 80 prints. These haunting, uh, thought-provoking images explore a wide range of basically uh, social and political themes of or Spanish society. So they had a a blend of nightmarish and fantastical imagery. Um, the Capitros delves into darker aspects of humanity, um, often a compelling and an enigmatic glimpse into Goya's sharp wit and artistic genius. So um, let's take a look at these. This is a woman in the style of the caprichos so first thing to note here is these were etchings so they have a sepia tone to them and that's how they are i i i think you should definitely google them you'll you'll see them right away they're not hard to find but you'll see the tone of these images uh come off with this this sepia a tone it's it's not um, as monotone as the original etchings but i think the journey does a pretty cool job so this is a woman, and uh, I, pretty cool, I, I stunning, definitely got that macabre and gothic feel to her. Oops, always forget to click in there. Where are you, cursor? Here's another woman. So I had a couple of them. I wanted to, since I was getting such good results with it, I can't help but share. All right. Uh, here's another one. Beautiful. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't think Mid Journey is going to capture the political and wit of the originals, but it's going to get the look of them. And as I say, they were haunting and, and beautiful and, and fantastical. So uh, this is pretty cool. I mean, that, that gauze uh, around her head is just, I don't know what that's called. Jeez. Uh, but it's rendered very cool. And here's another one. I really like that. This one, the pop of color on the monotone sepia, and, you know, it's very low contrast colors with her in the background, except for the red, and that red just, like, makes it snap. So we want to see what the masculine side of this is. And it's interesting. It's, you know, uh, trying to be thought-provoking. I, I don't know what it's saying here, but, um, you know, it it's... Definitely an interesting render and interesting composition. And again, we're at the same tone, tonality of, of the end. cheeseburger. That is thing like it. I couldn't get a cheeseburger. It it just, it rejected cheeseburger in this style. Um, but that's a beautiful cheeseburger. I'm just saying I got multiple ones that were very similar to this and hilarious that it, it the Capriccios, yeah, they weren't going to have a cheeseburger. Not going to do it. Dude, look at that. That is a very cool piece of artwork. Ah, just so detailed. Um, I, I love that you have this skull type head to the octopus, but you also have inside the tentacles, you have these, these lofts of hair or tufts of hair. And what a just masterful combination of, of the two elements and how creepy. A hairy skeleton octopus? Come on. That is very cool. Very cool. I love that. Motorcycle. You know, that's pretty straightforward. It's it's dark and macabre and but it's a motorcycle. It's is what it is. Um it's pretty. You know. I keep getting the I the motorcycle just it keeps I, I wanna have something mechanical in there, um, as we test these styles, but I gotta say the motorcycle is returning a very similar composition and look every time I render it. So that's a motorcycle. How look at that. Now we're back. This has a little bit of a cooler uh, tone to it, but still a very monochromatic look and uh, but very cool. I mean, so creative. I love it. I, I love I love down here in the base 
how it just it has this subtle twist to it it gives just this this really cool feel mid journey loves putting houses out on lakes on little islands i think they know they know where we all want to be away from everyone else a tree look at that very cool very monochromatic you know touches of red in there but stunning work it definitely has the etching feel to it especially in the trunk here um i like it and the rocks but yeah that's that's pretty straightforward and you know an excellent representation of what we're looking for here this one's it so this one definitely gives you that dark and gloomy feel like there's something menacing in those in this forest but while it sits in the blues and greens I, it doesn't have such a tight uh, monochromatic look to it it's got a little bit more range definitely not sitting on the warmer side like the originals uh but but beautiful i mean i i can imagine this in like a, a ralph batchy uh, background plate for one of his animations just stunning and detailed and creepy and yeah love it all right let's get to the next one all right our next style is momento more and that is a latin term uh that remember you must die i think um, yeah remember you must die is is the term and uh you know i gotta say so all this um this kind of dark gothic -y look came from uh um, our discord channel it, a lot of uh, people out there we're exploring a lot of the the members are exploring um tim burton and applying what were we applying the neo expressionism or and tim burton and lovecraft so that's what kind of inspired me because i got into the mix with the everyone on there and uh you know they are making some incredible work uh so i thought i would go and pull um a couple of you know gothic -y, dark macabre um styles and here we go all right so where are we uh momento more all right it is a latin phrase that uh remember you must die and in the art it refers to a common theme that is in art a lot and it depicts reminders of mortality and the transience of life and uh, momento more artworks often feature skulls hourglasses extinguished candles withered flowers uh, serving as powerful reminders for the impermanence of life the purpose of these pieces is to reflect on the inevitability of death um, and to embrace the present moment live now let's do it all right so uh, let's take a look at it okay so here is a woman in the style of momento more again who knows if i'm pronouncing things right obviously we have this skull uh i love that it puts skulls in the um into the roses into the flowers one of the things that mid journey missed here is those those flowers shouldn't be withered they shouldn't be so full of life but very cool the image and you know it it, it gets that's an interesting pose. I wish it didn't have this tuft of hair, but, you know, that can get cleaned up in Photoshop with uh, generative, generative, generative fill up in here. But I love these skulls in the flower. That's so cool. And, and here's a man, and, you know, we can see the element. You know, it's pulling in flowers, but it it's making them full of, uh, you know, they're, they're cut, but they're, they're lush. Um, but some of the other things that we can see that, that we got, we got the skull, which is very popular, but we also got a clock and that's interesting. You know, that's another symbol of, you know, time going by and, and we have enough fingers on there. Guess it could be kind of folded over, but anyway, I'm definitely hitting the, the right, uh, tones there or the right objects, subjects. I love that. Very cool. And remember, these are really simple prompts, so I'm really letting uh mid journey take the take the reins i don't see the wilted flowers but hey that's okay everything everything else is very fresh freshly cut flowers and lettuces there we go the octopus look at that again it's here we go we, we've got a skull again a more defined skull than we had in our previous one with the ox octopus tentacles but it also brought back the tufts of hair like 
that seems to be something that mid journey is returning to um even though it's a different style i love down here like this looks like a, a spinal joint god i'm just i'm dragging for it's been a weird week okay it's just been weird like i would say that's probably from like a tuna fish or something but very cool very very nicely illustrated i would say the motorcycle so this at first is like eh, okay it's ornately detailed monochromatic motorcycle again we're getting the same positioning and composition but then if you look it started to sneak in these skulls and look at this i love this right here the i guess it's rendering it as as a side exhaust but in the shape of a skull i think that is just so cool so there are subtle hints to the skull theme but that's pretty cool that is very cool all right and this is the house and this is really cool it gives you this surrealist look um really almost a feel of of dolly not the not the other ai thing but salvador has a really interesting look and you know he would be a little bit more obvious i think but there's some cool stuff here and you know we have our skulls we have deteriorated house and really just showing the passage of time and and um you know kind of morbid but it's also like hey a reminder you gotta you gotta go experience life today's your day tomorrow isn't guaranteed and a tree look at that that is i find this really cool it's um you know you got the tree kind of behind the skull the skull mounted on this almost i i mean from the scale of it it looks like a bonsai type thing but monochromatic very chilling but very cool you know we I, I i love too like it doesn't push out to the edges like it's very clean edges all the way around and uh you know that's nice because previously mid journey and everything would really push things out or you would get improper zooms and this is uh this did a really nice job monochromatic again but but beautiful and and i think it's hitting the notes of you know we have the uh i don't know what the symbolism of the crows are but we have the the dead tree the skull great stuff a forest look at this look at the details i i love this this is you know interesting that we kind of have this cross shape in here this definitely evokes the feel of franzetta and uh you know if you remember him from the 70s and his popular uh conan type depictions bar barbarian depictions and fantasy this definitely has that feel and uh i was amazed when this popped up and you know just you know there's so much to it it's the detail on on this skull on the far right corner now as you go deeper into one you have atmospheric perspective things get really loose the further they get from camera and i i love that it gives almost a a focal a focal range to the painting um but it's not out of focus it's just done in a different way where it's 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 loose but i love this i i love how there's just skulls everywhere and this is creating something that it's create is now creating pieces that you want to spend time with it's not just ooh that's that's pretty it's i want to sit here and kind of look and see like oh look back here there's there's a little skull you know back in that depth how many of these skulls can i find oh they got one back over here you know you want to spend time with it and isn't that what art is about is like spending time with it and like you know good art you don't want to look away you want to end you want to keep coming back and something like this gives you that it gives you that feeling of of traditional art i included this one too because it was you know i was torn between the two of these i really like this as the painterly aspect this has a more realistic look to it but where i mean this is a very simple prompt and and mid journey spits this out we got this skull you know at first i thought it was a um a burial mound or something um but then i noticed like this actually up here looks like it's a um, car part. I'm not sure what's going on in here. It it feels like a body, but then it could also have that that 
this in here, you know, it could also be like white birch or silver birch where you have that feel of the, of the wrapped bar, or it could be part, it could be this dude's body or dudettes, but I thought that was a cool one to in, include. And that's the last one. All right. And that's Momento More. Give it a try. All right. Our next style is macabre folk art. And uh, this is a folk art that explores eerie, macabre, dark, supernatural themes um, within a folk art style rooted in local folklore, cultural traditions. Macabre folk art oh, often... Um, Features, uh, depictions of death, mythical creatures, uh, other mysterious elements. The artwork may incorporate unsettling imagery as, such as eerie landscapes, uh, ghosts, ghosts, and other eerie creatures uh, while reflecting on the fears and beliefs of the community from which they originate. The enduring fascination with the unknown and supernatural and traditional art form or, or in in traditional art forms, exploring them in church. Jesus, I'm just stumbling over everything. Anyway, macabre folk art. Let's take a, this is a woman. Look at it. I mean, you get all these weird creatures in the back. You get, she does not look happy. Very sad, very, very uh, almost defeated by her for existence here, but it's dark and there's a lot of fear. And I don't know if she's fearful. She just, she looks cautious. Here's a man. I mean, this this gives me this background gives me the feel of uh which is really interesting look at this weird skull goat skull thing gives me this feel of a battleground like a war had gone on here and maybe it's these elements that kind of look like gas masks but very interesting how gaunt and and drained he is rendered out you know very similar to our our skull over here and i hope these aren't organ i hope those aren't organs I'm going to just say it's play mignon, uncooked. All right. That's a man. Oh, look at that burger. Look at how cool this is. Because now Midjourney is now introducing an as asymmetrical look. Uh, you know, we have this very defined, cool eye. But over here, we have lettuce and stuff coming out of it. I mean, how cool is that? How does it figure this out? Yeah, very, I love it. I, I think this is done really well. Clean up a couple of elements and, and make a print of this because this is just, this is phenomenal. I like that. It, like in the eye, you get that catch light to give it that, that vibrance. You know, if you take a photo of somebody and you don't have a catch light, they can look kind of like, let's just add, say that that catch light in somebody's eye in, in photography just adds a lot of life to a portrait. So it's really cool that, that, they got one in there. I would, you know, when I used to have my wedding business and stuff, if I got a very flat lighting where we didn't get a good catch light, I would go in and paint them in and it would make like the most incredible difference in portraits. An octopus. Now this is the exact opposite. This is mid journey going with complete symmetry. I mean, you could split this image right down the middle and 100% symmetrical, even with these like fly off tentacles but everything else bam right on it which is interesting because i always thought that that mid journey didn't know what was happening in the other so parts of images i'm not sure how they're getting that but so that's an octopus octopus in the macabre full cart and here's a motorcycle so this is interesting because this is a photograph of a motorcycle but it's not a real motorcycle because it looks it's a type of sculpture, and I would say it's like a type of like found art sculpture. As you can see in here, like this isn't representing a real engine. It's it's a representation of an engine through wood and twine. And I don't see the real dark side of of this. What I do see is more of a vintage feel to it. Um, but interesting take. You know, that's why I have all these. Why I test styles with all of these different subjects because you never know how the subject is affecting the style and as you can see here it's it's definitely the motorcycle has definitely added a feel to the style and <laughs> fits this is something i would see uh, on like a jigsaw puzzle i mean is that just awesome again it's another image that you could just spend time with 
and just look through and like see like all of these cool little animals, eerie, fantastical, supernatural beasts. But what a feeling this has. And there is just a lot going on. I love it. I, I think it's executed fantastic. You know, it's that that post the the blue hour blue hour setting. It's 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 beautiful. I mean, very very Halloweeny, very autumn feel to it. I'm lucky that I get to I live in New England, so this really hits a note with me. And here's another one. So this one's a little bit plainer. It doesn't have the the supernatural feel to it, but boy, does this have a great New England feel to it and it, it it doesn't have your traditional you know I mean maybe no maybe a one point perspective I wouldn't even say that's a one point perspective that is a a flat flat sided representation there's there's no traditional perspective drawn into this but there is once again I'm going to say the word it's atmospheric perspective as things go further into the back they become less vibrant less contrasty but again this i love this image again a little touching up and this could be a print this would be stunning and who knows maybe for halloween it does have i think these are either these are moons or it's a snowfall that's coming it's interesting because the season represented here is the stick season and uh up in vermont where I spend a lot of time. Stick season is after uh, all the leaves have fallen off the trees. You passed, you have peak color, and then you have this this very uh, rust, kind of a rust season, where all the tree uh, leaves have gone to this dark rust, and then they've all hit the ground and kind of blown away. And then you have stick season, which comes before winter. And, you know, all the trees are bare, leaves are gone, but you don't have any snow yet. Um, so that's stick season in, in New England. And this is an excellent representation of stick season. One thing I'm noticing here. So up here in this right side, I have a random tree uh, branches. And it's kind of faint. But I'm just pointing that out because back in, what is it, uh, version 2 or version 3 of Mid Journey, there used to be uh, rogue, whenever you had trees and, and, and uh, forests and stuff, there would be rogue branches that were just growing out of nothing. So it's interesting. I haven't seen that in a long time, but uh, that's showing up. And I mean, easy fix. It's, it's, just, it's just there, just pointing it out because, uh, you know, that brings us back to uh, our old, old mid-journey, which I miss sometimes. Look at this. Have you guys seen Sweet Tooth? I mean, this is the feel of Sweet Tooth completely, but uh, very cool. I love the, the, just the, these twirling, um, branches and, you know, it gives it a real thorny and feel. The fact that this skull and this guy here are, are kind of connecting eye lines is really cool. The, cr the whole twirl of the tree, the composition of that beautiful the color palette amazing i love how this this has this warm you know kind of uh golden hour feel like if golden hour were to hit um a mist or uh, a foggy field like you would get this just bloom of of oranges in the lighting the 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 character here is very interesting it, it's got the antlers which surprising to me that it would go with that. Um, the proportions of the character are really interesting because they're very, the upper body is very exaggerated and you have these long arms, long limbs up top, and then a, a long um, body cavity compared to his head. Like his, it's like you just stretched out this part of his body. Very interesting. And then his upper thighs are very short, but then you have long long shins again and kind of oversized hands and feet it's just a very interesting take on proportions of a humanoid body and it's close enough that we recognize it as human far enough that it's creepy <laughs> and i love that but uh yeah there's a tree and here's a forest look at this 
This is Halloween. Oh, I don't want to get copyright striked. Anyway, this looks like it could be straight out of a Tim, Bur Tim Burton um, concept for for Night Nightmare Before Christmas. Beautiful stuff. So look at all the characters and. It's inter what's interesting to me is their their spacing, how they're just placed in 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 perspective, and it's a it's it's a perspective that's created by folk art, which is very flat, but but you know it's a it's a scale type perspective, as you can see with the trees coming down. So the tops of the trees are coming down, the 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 ground is going up, and then the scale of the characters fit within that. Um, very interesting how that that stuff. It's a very interesting take on on perspective um, and gives this very folk art feel to it. And I love some of these characters in here. This guy over here, kind of squid thing. You're also getting imagery in here, like like this tree up front with the which is almost a Celtic cross, and then along with like these these lumps and stuff, shapes that are reminiscent of you know, with the cross of a cemetery. I'm not saying this is a cemetery, but it's it gives that feel, so your head kind of interprets that. Very cool, though. And again, I, I could totally see this as a mood board or a mood for a, a project like A uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. So much cool stuff. And I didn't reference Tim Burton here. I'm telling you, this is straight up, straight out of... Uh, Folk, macabre folk art but all right that is it macabre folk art all right thank you for joining me this week and taking a look at some dark and gloomy stuff even though it's july you know summer guys um anyway i would definitely suggest uh this was heavily inspired by what's going on over on discord i would say um i'll put a link in the description you know, go join us over there. A lot of fun stuff is going on. There are great artists, great AI artists that are are taking this stuff to the next level. Um, and I love it. They're inspiring me. Um, and I I can't wait to see what they do with these because I try to surprise them. But I, I do give some hints on what I'm working on. But uh, anyway, thank you very much. If you could like this video, that would be great. Um, comment below because I love talking to you guys. Um, and, and if you can't make it over to Discord, this is a great place to chat. Um, I'm on Discord all the time. And subscribe to the video. I would like that. Excellent. All right. Until next week.